You're listening to Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ, Darren, and Randy. We've got a bonus episode for you. We don't even put numbers on it. It's that special. We've got Matt Carano with us. How's it going? Excellent. Well, we're going to be talking about Swarm City here on this bonus episode of Neo Cash Radio. Yeah, we chatted with him a little bit on Wednesday's show, but uh, we, we, you know, hopefully you heard that, and now we're tuning in to hear a little bit about what uh, Matt does with Swarm City, what Swarm City is, and all that stuff. But yeah, we can start with that. What is Swarm City? Sure. Uh, well, Swarm City. Um, I like to look at it like this. Uh, I know I said this on the on the program too, but in case you didn't hear that, I look at it like uh, commerce takes two things. It needs it needs the ability to communicate. And it needs the ability to transact. And in essence, what Swarm City is, is, is a way to do that in a decentralized way. So it's a way for, for people who are looking to purchase goods or services and then uh, people who have uh, goods to provide or services to provide to be able to connect with each other using a hash tagging system. And then to be able to transact without anybody in the middle of that transaction. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, hash, I mean, the hashtag system is as well used in, in many different things these Twitter, days. Twitter, maybe. Yeah, Twitters and, <laughs> right. and all kinds of uh, places. So then um, the the system is built on a blockchain, isn't that right? Yes. Uh, so it, it's based on the Ethereum um, the Ethereum platform, but uh, it's a, it's its own separate token. Right. So we're not using Ether. We're using the Swarm City token as the as the token. Yep. Okay. And so you you what's is the the token set what is the token status right now? Yeah, so the tokens were created during the token sale itself, um, which happened in November of 2016. And during that token sale, there were 9.5 million minted, and that's the total amount that will forever be minted. So oh, there, wow. there won't be any more ever available. Now, is there mining involved with this? There's no because it's part of the Ethereum blockchain. There's no more. You don't have to worry about any of that. It's just Correct. a token traded, yep. like uh, like like uh, any of the other tokens we talk about. Uh, one no, notably, last episode uh, was oh, the previous one was Golem tokens on a couple other tokens. Anyway, moving on to talk about Swarm City, the the aspect of connecting uh, buyer and seller basically is is what's going on here. But it's more than that because of the service aspect. So this covers a lot of different things. Yeah, there are so many different use cases. Um, probably the easiest one to conceptualize is just probably because of the 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 backstory on the project is the is is rideshare, right? Um, it's such an easy one to conceptualize, but basically it's a way for if you look at it from the rideshare standpoint, it's a way for someone to ask for a ride and someone to provide that ride without I, I, I like to say it's the Uber without the Uber, right? Okay. Uber's a great service because you can just go into an app, ask for a ride, and someone will come pick you up. But there's a problem with that service. It's a centralized system, and um, they extract a lot of value from the people who are producing the value in order to pay for their administration. They take like 25% of the transaction to pay for themselves. Um, and then also, you know, from a philosophical standpoint, if Uber does not want that transaction to take place for some reason... They can say no, right? Whenever you have someone in the middle, they have the ability to say no. Right. When Swarm City, you can use a hashtag to ask for a ride, and then someone can search by that hashtag who's a, a service provider, um, connect with the the person asking for it via that uh, via the app, and essentially they can do the transaction, and no one can stand in the way of it. So th- there's at that at that point it, are people so they're, they're hashtagging and that's the way to sort of categorize what and this is, is the, being asked for what service whether it's a ride or I want uh, I want you to pick up a pizza from a place that right deliver. Del- hashtag delivery New Hampshire right. hashtag and, you need know, a ride hashtag need a haircut yeah. hashtag you know, whatever stop and yep. pick me up milk yep milk and eggs or and, whatever and the cool thing is the hashtagging system yeah. it, it, this is the one of the brilliant parts of it um, I didn't design it so I'm I'm giving compliments to to the the developers and designers but. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a way of creating context around what you want to do, which therefore creates reputation, yes. right? Okay. Because if you're, if you're using a hashtag and say I'm a, a driver who, who drives on the need a ride, New Hampshire hashtag, and I've done a thousand transactions, every transaction mints, it, it mints a, a token, a transa- a, uh, a reputation token for that hashtag. Don't think of it in terms of a ta- uh, transaction that has value besides, it's sort of being a like a check mark, a point for okay. doing that transaction. But if you've done a thousand rides on hashtag need a ride, you're probably a 
you know, respected service, right? People can see that you've done a thousand they, of those can transactions. Can you go back in your history and, and look at each one and see uh, if there was any comments connected to it or anything like that? Or is that sort of going to be in place? So that's uh, that's not something that in the next release will be incorporated. But um, in the in so the next release is called Boardwalk. But the release after that, when uh, called Storefront, where companies can sort of al- align themselves, they can feel free to put that as part of their storefront into okay. the service. Yeah. For a moment, let's just talk about the release that's out right now. And, sure. and if people want to download it or if they want to find out more information, where should they go to, to see about this? Well, they can always go to swarm.city um, to set up a user profile. The first release is called Terminal, and it's the entrance to swarm.city so, or to Swarm City. And it's what you can do there is you can create a user, um, and you can you can send and receive swarm tokens, swarm tokens. So it's your it's your wallet, right? Okay. And that was released in February, um, and then pretty soon you're going to see the second release happen, which is called Boardwalk, and that's where the hashtagging, um, you know, service seeker provider interaction can start to take place. Uh, and uh, and and how you can find more information is you can go to swarm.city. There's information tagged there. Or you can join us in our Slack, um, in which we'll post the uh, the invitation to the Slack in the in the show notes, hopefully, and let people want to want to check out more and, information there. And so, Matt, I, I, I was at the uh, event you had on, on uh, the a few Fridays ago at, mm. uh, at the Praxium, where uh, one of the lead developers, yeah, Michael Tui, about, yep, and uh, he he was talking that it wasn't just for uh, like a ride sharing app. It was, uh, I remember saying something about dog walking, sure, and, and all this. So. It really can be, you know, there are a bunch of different types of transactions. It's actually kind of a fun exercise to think about what they are, but mm-hmm. retail is a type of transaction. You know what's a good one here in New Hampshire? What is? In the middle of winter and you're, you need to help clearing your car out. Your car's plowed in. Shoveling or snow. Shoveling. These ladies down the street, they have to wait till the mid after day, you know. Need just a plow? Pile, yeah, or just shovel out my... Well, that could be misconstrued. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was able to secure some help at uh, basically repairing my driveway. So I'm going to get a whole bunch of crushed stone delivered, and then three people are going to come, and they're going to help me spread it out and all that. And um, it would be neat if uh, Swarm City had a three, like I could have like three people join. And it, oh, yeah, wow. And yeah, I don't know if that, so that probably won't be coming. The cool, well, the cool thing about Swarm City, it's a, it's it's as, you can make it whatever you want. People can create their own hashtags, so their own services. So if there is a demand for it, it can be created. So I, I don't think there'd be much demand, but, but this is you connecting know, A and B, right? There's, there's, it's a two-party connection. Yeah, and it's like he's talking about multi-party. Is that something else that can be? Is, is, is there a way to request this from the de- developers? Is there a way to be like, hey, this is a feature I'm looking for, or something like that? Well, sure, you can ask on Slack. Yeah, I don't come on in. need it that often. I mean, I don't. I, this is the only second time I've repaired my driveway in like five, seven years, but. Uh, Dar- but, Darren, are you building the roads? I am going <laughs> to build a road this weekend. Yes, <laughs> nice. <laughs> they said it couldn't be done. <laughs> I'm building a road. Yeah, I mean it's repairing my road. I'm sorry to digress, it, but there it, was, it is my road. So you went to this thing on Friday. What was it? Oh yeah, it was at the at the Praxium where they had the the uh, lead developer talk about Swarm City. Yeah, and, system architect Michael Tui. And um, we can include a, a link to a video of that. Is oh yeah, yeah, it's on YouTube. On, I posted on the blog post. Earlier. Oh yeah, I, I need that link too. Cool. I, I posted it in the event itself, and then yeah, in a I, of I need to. Some of my friends wanted to go, and they couldn't, so we. Well, I watched some. I watched some of it. Uh, I didn't get through all of it yet, but I'm looking forward to watching the rest. But I, I did want to ask you, sort of, um, you know, because I, I don't know, I didn't know much about Swarm City. What I knew it as before was Arcade City, sure. and we covered that extensively on Neocache Radio, both when uh, that was sort of in the planning stages, and that was something that was um, going to be run on the Ethereum blockchain as well. And then the sort of founder, or janitor, he had many <laughs> titles along the way. Christopher David um, proved, proved himself to be a little bit less of a savory character. So what happened where Arcade City morphed into Swarm City? Yeah, so I think it it got to a point where, um, and, and that's how Michael Tui ties in yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so well, okay, just so for the listeners, if they're like, wait, we just jumped. So Michael Tui and uh, and and the rest of the, the dev team were working on a project for the city of Antwerp in Belgium that w- was solving some administrative um, and reputational issues for the citizens of Antwerp, and they were using the Ethereum um, platform in, in which to do it. So this concept of tokenizing, creating reputation, all that stuff, they were already working on. 
uh, and they'd been doing it for the last few years, right? And uh, and so what ended up happening was I'm not sure how the connection happened, but Michael started seeing I think posts about Arcade City and him and he sort of made the mental connection. Oh, that's exactly what we're doing here. We could build that app. And so he reached out and spoke to some people uh, at Arcade City and eventually Christopher David, who then flew over to to Belgium and they wrote the white paper and the token sale together. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I wasn't involved at this point, but it seemed that the that Chris has some baggage and his reputation was following him. And uh, and so there needed to be a, a split uh, and the, the value... A hard fork. Well, a brand <laughs> fork, I think, is, is probably what it, yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. it was called. But it made sense that the the key holders and, you know, really the fiduciary responsibility party, um, they're the people who had fiduciary responsibility to the the people who were purchasing tokens had to make sure that they were delivering delivering their promise. And so the brand fork occurred yes. and, uh, and we moved forward. And so people that had bought Arcade City tokens in the crowd sale... Are are can through the Ethereum chain, right, uh, uh, trade them for uh, Swarm City tokens. Right? Yeah, and that's actually something that I'd, uh, I'd never been done before trading a token for a token. So the uh, so the dev team had to figure that out first, which was part of the terminal release as well. But right, so they wanted to make sure that anybody who participated in the Arc token sale did not get screwed in any way. So they made it so you could exchange your Arc tokens for SWAT at a one to one ratio forever. Um, Right, because yeah, it's to, just to a contract to, on the that's network. It. Yep. Yeah, yep. So great. So, oh, how much was how much was raised? Do you know um, with the crowd sale? Seventy seven thousand something ether. I can't remember the exact wow. the exact number. Whoa. Yeah, which is a lot more now than it was. Then. It is. Yeah, yeah. It's gone up mm-hmm. uh, considerably since then. Yes, five times. <laughs> I think. So now, now that that money is that still uh, it's still being held by the, uh, the Swarm City uh, team, fiduciary responsible people. What's going on with that? Yeah, it's the key holders to that to that wallet. Which actually, there's a public link to it too. You can see it and all the transactions that have gone from it since uh, since sure. the, since Jump Street. Um, but it's in a it's in a three of five wallet. So they you know any uh, ether that gets spent from that wallet there at least has to be a a consensus there. And now is that something that's going to be more decentralized as time goes on? Uh, so that's not just five key holders that make these decisions. Yeah. So eventually, um, the and I, well, I don't want to answer questions that I don't know a hundred percent on. But that's one of the reasons why you mentioned Trellith earlier. This this project, or I'm not sure if we did on the show. Not this, on but, this show, but, we'll, but we'll, we'll, we can know we can talk about but it that, in a minute. That's one of the reasons for Trellis. So Trellith is a way to um, help decentralize these these funds. Basically, the decision making around these funds. Now, is this going to be somewhat in, in in what I'm seeing now? We saw with Zcash, they they created a foundation, and they basically gave that foundation some sort of control and whatnot. In other other cases, they're like the Dash, for example. Mm-hmm. It's a development team that then became a DAO, so to speak, and the development team is still funded by the DAO and still part of it, but they're sort of you know decentralizing that that sort of decision making process. Um, is there any sort of thought of taking uh, Swarm City in that direction, a DAO, a DAO sort of method? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what that'll look like. I do know that the dev team is in through the the third release, so the storefront release of of Swarm City, and I'm sure I know that they're thinking about, you know, what happens next because okay. there will there's going to be there'll be funds left over most likely. I mean, they're they're actually very quick in their development. They've, in two months, they had. They had terminal done, and just a few months more, they'll have you know from when they started with Boardwalk, it'll be done. So storefront won't take too much longer either. Wow, it's amazing. They're so, quick. So what's happening in Antwerp? I mean, is is has any is any of this tied into what's going on in Antwerp? It's currently? the center like, is... of the universe right now. No, no, no. They uh, so they since stopped working for the city of Antwerp. I think you know to a certain extent, um, and I don't want to you know speak put words in their mouth, but what it sounded like to me. Um, from my conversations with with Michael, is that at a certain level, Antwerp wasn't going to fully, you know, integrate this into their system. I think on a political level, it started. They started getting pushback, and so they oh, can, they, they built their city through. That's, I know it's that's it's, unfortunate, right? But but that they can express their vision through Swarm City instead. 
Excellent. Yeah. So um, one thing now you compare this, uh, and, and some people obviously will compare it to Uber and then Lyft and the other ride sharing apps and 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 whatnot. One thing I've noticed, I've not used Uber myself mm. to be very honest and clear and, and full disclosure. Whatever. I have. I haven't used any of them. I've seen other people use them, and what I've seen them most care about is watching that driver drive up to their yeah, house. it's true. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, is is that sort of a direction that you think the dev team will be able to go in, or is that, you know, that sort of visceral UI, that experience of seeing it happening on your phone and being able to see the progress, I think, is something people are just addicted to with, like, Facebook today. Um, I mean, that's that's sort of one way I see the uh, this sort of thing sort of working. So the, that- cool, the cool thing on Swarm City is you can have, it doesn't have to be one rideshare service. It can be hundreds of rideshare services all with a different oh, interface, sure. right? So uh, there actually there there is, it's branded Arcade City, but the, um, the dev team programmed a working rideshare app using some, I don't know if the word testnet is correct, but like a test um, Ethereum setup. Yeah. Right, right, maybe right before the token sale. And you can go online and you can view it now. And it, and it has some of those attributes. So it's, it's got a map oh, wow. and, and all that's that. That's on in the there. testnet? I can't, re- I might be using that. No, it's that called word, the right? testnet. Is that what yeah, it is? There yeah. is an Ethereum testnet. Yes, there is. I've been on it. I still don't want to sound stupid if I said the wrong word. Oh, don't I, worry no, about I it. No, I believe you. you can use that's the what I'm here for. <laughs> don't worry. It's, I, I, I think that's 100% the right word. But, any, but you, there can, might be you can view it. You can seven, see like yeah. the first iteration of what, what a rideshare app would look like using so Ethereum with Swarm City. Yeah. So it's easy. No, so yeah. down, no. Sounds okay. like that process isn't that hard to do. Yeah. From what I, from like sure. compared to what they've done already. I think honestly, you, if you can get licensing for like Google Maps or something like that, then you can just change the cursor. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just change the cursor to this. Yeah. Um, to a B. Uh, Randy, did you have some more questions? Um, well, I uh, basically, I just want to know sort of, um, yeah, what, what roadmap looks like for, for future releases, but also what you see this maybe blossoming into. I mean, if you if you want to dream a little bit, you know, past past the ride sharing and stuff. I mean, really, what you see the the value being because obviously you you got involved in this because why did yeah, you get involved I, in this? Uh, go ahead and go there. Yeah, you're right. I could see the implications pretty early on. I mean, even I remember Christopher David talking about it during the free Uber campaign through through Portsmouth. He was talking about about a decentralized ride share app, and and I remember him talking about it and thinking that's not just ride share. I mean, you can do. Any like mm-hmm. any service provider, any retail thing mm-hmm. that way too, right? So I could see early on kind of the dream of that, and you know, and that's why I participated in the token sale in in the beginning is because I I was like, well, if this goes somewhere, this could really change how we do commerce in the world. So um, so that was extremely inspiring for me, uh, which is why I got involved, and then you know I, I feel like I really got lucky because. You know, frankly, Christopher David was never going to make the, this. He doesn't. He doesn't really have the the skill set in order to make it. I'm, I feel so lucky that the dev team saw it, that Michael saw it, and was like, "Oh, we can do that. We're already doing that." And they got involved. Um, but then, from a, I mean, I, I really, it's hard. It's hard to know. Like, it's just it could it could be air, like real estate. Uh, you know, any service like a Airbnb type of situation, obviously, to any retail, it's it's hard to. It's so big, it's hard for me to to not see it that I'm, way. I'm all excited and want to walk somebody's dog. I left I left that talk <laughs> right. wanting to walk somebody's dog, like really to get on there and say, yes, I'll walk your dog. Yeah. And then just, just for, for for fun. Yeah. You know, I'm, I mean, it would be nice to get a little token for that, but yeah. just to see it used and all that. I, mean, I have a, a question. Sure. And uh, you're not the technical person, but I, I still want to ask this question. So... Um, um, and now for I just did I did some token transfers just to kind of play with it, mm-hmm. and those you know the token transfers require ether the, uh, to use as gas to to uh, basically power the, uh, the 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 transaction. So um, so if this is built on top of Ethereum from the end user perspective, um, will the end user have to keep track of swarm tokens and ether so that they can uh, d- do this as well or how, I'm not sure what the work? I'm not sure what the interface will look like. I will say that any Ethereum wallet can hold SWAT, so it's very easy. To, so if you've got if you have the right 
uh, client, like you know, my right. wallet, you can see both your right. your ether and your swarm tokens. Yeah, at any the same address time. has it. It's only if the client can, can recognize will show it. it. Right, yeah, but yeah. I'm I would I don't want to make a sound. I I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth or say things that are not going to happen. But I would assume that there would be some way to view that through swarm. Through yeah, swarm say, right yeah. to to see. But yeah, you'd want to make sure you do need to have like, like the a thing is I don't want to go out and you know have plenty of swarm tokens. I'm all ready for my ride. And be and, like, shoot. And then there's no Don't ether, ether to power the... Well, another thing you can do is like... So right now, uh, I, I know we talked about this um, earlier before the show, but uh, Changely, the exchange, has incorporated um, Swarm tokens into their exchange. So and that actually means you can buy uh, SWAT tokens with your credit card. But you could also buy Ethereum with your credit card, too. And if you did need to load some onto your wallet... It'd be pretty easy to do. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm thinking it's more complicated than it is going to be. Yeah. So I, any of these service providers, in theory, could present a UI that show like really doesn't relay anything about cryptocurrency or sure. anything complicated. They yep. could just have a changely authorized transaction where someone's swiping their credit card, and then the provider you know, could could elect to get their payout in Ethereum or in SWAT tokens or something like that. Correct. Yeah. So the underlying transactions are run by you know by the SWAT token, right? But but you could see it, the the interface will show things in USD or ETH or Euro or whatever you want. You can you can just have it look like whatever you want it to look like. That sounds good. Yeah. So so this is sort of um, there's a wallet release. And it sounds like you're talking more of like an API where where the the signals are sent and then the service providers have to come up with their own way of interpreting those signals and showing them to the end user. Is is that sort of the way to describe it or is, do you understand what I'm saying? I can't visualize what storefront will look like. Okay. Uh, right. I was, yeah. And uh, unfortunately, so I think what will, what will happen if, if the the past is showing what the future will be, I I helped uh, Michael write the um, the paper that describes what Boardwalk will be once it releases. So I'm assuming that I will help him write storefront, and then once I do, I'll I'll have a visual okay. about what it'll be. But I can't quite conceptualize what that'll look sure. like. Fair enough. Well, do you want to talk about uh, Trellith? We did it on the show Wednesday, but just it's a pretty neat thing, and you mentioned it earlier as a way to begin decentralizing these these tasks that are currently held by by key holders. Yeah, I mean, it's a really like interesting mind experiment, thought experiment to do to think about things in sort of a new way, decentralized way, like no corporate structure, because that's kind of the world that I'm living in. And one of the things when we uh, when we created the communication hive to start to express the vision of Swarm City, you know, verbally, not code like the dev the dev hive does, yes, but verbally. Um, and uh, video Lee. Yeah, and, video and right. Yeah, sure. And text Lee. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but to do that, we're, we we wanted to come up with a way that would transcend us or tra- or uh, so that it could still happen and still function even if we were no longer there. Put a system in place for or other communication hives to 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 pop up at some point if they wanted to, you know, um, if they wanted to talk about other projects in Swarm City. Uh, so we wanted to kind of model that. And then, so we had to figure out how do we do that? And one way was to organize on Trello board, a public Trello board, right? And mm-hmm. so if you can kind of picture it, uh, a Trello board is like, it's, uh, it, one Trello board could be a, a project and it has these lists and those lists could be like goals in the project. And then cards on these lists are specific tasks for the goals on the project, right? And so we were trying to think about how we could how we could be really transparent about the tasks we're doing, but that we could also, oh, we could fund tasks on the board too. So we thought about Michael actually came up with the idea of of well, we could put a, you know, a wallet on there that's pre-funded so that you know, people who wanted to participate in communications from outside, they could look in the public board and say, "Oh, well, I can write that press release. I'd love to do it for, you know, 10 SWAT or whatever it is. So we kind of came up with that idea. And as he was, he was thinking about it more and more and more and more, he came up with the idea of Trellith, which is Trello and Ether is, you know, combined into that word. It's a way to um, tokenize that board. So you can, um, using the Trellith as a, it's, so it's a, it's a power up for Trello that allows you to tokenize the board so that people can view tasks and fund tasks, and then people can also uh, pr- uh, participate in the tasks by saying, "I want, you know, I want to, I want to fulfill that task." And it's a way for people to communicate, like Boardwalk, on Trello. 
And the way that I look at it is it's sort of a, a way to to get rid of the idea of the white paper. Like right now, people are making millions and millions on on writing like these these short little white papers, right? And yeah, and and doing all these insane. token sales and making ten million. And it's it's so crazy, and it's like you can't even see the project. Well, instead of that, imagine a Trello board that is a project and it has the whole thing sort of mapped out and people can just fund different aspects of the project saying, Oh yeah, that part's cool. I'd really like that to happen. Oh, that part's really cool. And then once those transactions happen, once the, 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 um, the card, the task has been completed and there's proof of that and the, the transaction happens where the service provider is paid, then the person who funded it gets reputation tokens for the board. So they get to, they get to have a piece of the project. You know what I mean? Like a like an investor now would have a, a percentage of the token sale or a percentage of a you know of a, a company by funding it. Sure, that's yeah. very cool. And to what you were saying about the the big ICOs and white papers, I I would really prefer to see something that's more mapped out. Yeah, you know, where it's like it's much clearer and it's not just uh, overview talk of like these things are going to appear at a, this time, but to just to be able to see that they've given it that much time right. and thought to to really map this out and certainly that's going that could fluctuate depending on funding but sure. even still to be able to paint a more realistic picture of what things need to happen cuz for most people I think that aren't intimately involved with these kinds of projects there's really little to no idea of how much testing and debugging and all sorts of other things go into this i mean we've kind of kept tabs on like uh the li- library team and stuff sure. and it's just like there's so much that goes into it behind the scenes that is not uh that's not, really not sexy in the white paper either like you, you don't see it yeah, yeah exactly and so just to be able to to have a better idea i just saw that uh ledger the hardware wallet has a trello board up sort of showing their roadmap and people are currently like thumbs upping or you know sort of expressing votes that way um, but certainly, I think uh, companies would be incentivized to incentivize. Yeah, and it creates trust too, right? Like here's a here's a map out. It's public. Everybody can see what's going on. Well, and well anybody, you, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, and you like say a, a musician wants to wants to um, record an album, right? Well, people are using GoFundMe right now to to do projects like that. But what if they they did it in a, in a Trellis board? And they said, okay, well, I need to record these 12 tracks and I've already written it and each card could be a task and, oh, I need to hire this musician to come in. And you can have your friends and family like fund specific parts of that, no, of that yeah, task. That's great. And you're not paying, again, for the fees. Uh, right, that... 15% or whatever it is that GoFundMe charges. Well, I'm going to, of course, have a link up where now, people can find a, out more about Trello. I mean, is this something you you add onto your Trello experience? How does this work? Yeah, it's a tre- uh, Trello offers power ups where oh, you can okay. integrate different stuff, like right. um, you know, like even Google Drives and things. Excellent. Well, yeah. and we'll have a a link up on neocashradio.com where you can find out more about Trello and see if you can use it. So, uh, one more time, give us some uh, contact information where people can go to find out more and chat with you, perhaps. Yeah, you can certainly find us at at, uh, at uh, Slack is basically the biggest community that we have of you know people kind of talking. So, we'll post the um, the invite for that, or you can you know find us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, Swarm City, or on Twitter, you can you can just at Swarm City um, DAP is our is our handle. You can find mm-hmm. us there. Excellent. And then the website. Oh, swarm.city. Swarm.city is the Sorry website. Sorry about that. Yeah, I forgot oh, about the website. That's all right. It's all good. <laughs> uh, just a reminder that you can tune in to Neocache when, uh, Radio every Wednesday night. And uh, you don't want to miss a single moment of awesome Neocache content, including special episodes and bonus interviews just like this one. Subscribe on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Podcast Addict, and more. For Neocache Radio, this is JJ. Darren. And Randy. And thanks so much again, Matt. You got it. Neo Cash Radio. We discuss the future of money today.